Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a new replay review. I'm going to be doing a replay review for Diamond 1. And I'm going to be showing you how to rank up out of Diamond and continue your way up into High Diamond and Champ. And this time, I think I'm going to be showing more mistakes from all of the players rather than just one person. And that way, you know, you have more ideas on what you should be doing. Anyways, let's get into the replays. Alright, I'm going to be spectating the pink team for a little bit. See how things go. Alright, so already he's playing a little too far. So, at this point here, you see uh, Glim Horse, he's kind of just flipping to the wall. You don't need to stay in the net, and you also don't need to jump at it every time, you don't need to like go up and just aerial up to this, but you want to be a little bit closer. Uh, what you'll see happen a lot of the times down here is that, you know, usually this guy right here is going to be really awkward, he doesn't really know how to approach this ball, and then you just kind of sit here and wait, see what he does, and then you can just go for the ball, rather than, you know, being all the way back here. And then when this guy is like kind of awkward, you give him time to like set up the ball. And then now you're back here. See, now he's kind of setting up, he's giving him time. Whereas, you know, if he goes a little bit earlier, then he can put this play out. But had this T guy just adjusted a few seconds earlier, then the guy wouldn't have been there in time. Good boost deal. So this is one thing. I'll go to this guy's perspective. So we'll go to let's go. And you'll see the ball's kind of coming to the corner. So when the ball's going to the corner like this, you don't need to flip into it. What you want to do here is you just want to let this ball come to the corner. So let me go to fly mode. So you just want to let this keep coming to the corner, take this boost. Because what that does is it allows the ball to come to the corner and then you can control it with boost and you leave this guy low. And one thing I want you to keep in your mind when you're playing your games is that the corners are always a safe place. Because in the corner, you know, there's not really an immediate shot they can really place on the net. So if you have the option to let the ball come to the corner and control it, then take it. So this is something that you'll see me talk about in, uh, a lot in champ, um, but it happens, you know, every, every rank even lower than that. Sometimes even in GC, you'll see it happen occasionally. Um, but when your team can keep pressure on the ball, so you see Glim's all the way in their half and he has the ball, he's just playing it in the corner. Instead of rotating all the way back to this and then grabbing the full boost and then coming all the way back, it's actually better to, even if say you're on a zero boost and you're here, and you grab this pad or one of these pads, a couple of these pads, somewhere in here and you stay with 30, 40, 50 plus boost, and you just stay in the play, because that way you can keep pressure. Because now, if you stay a little bit closer, you also give your teammate uh, an option to pass to you, and any ball that stays in their half, you can just follow up and keep pressure on it. And the more you pressure guys, especially down here, the more they run out of boost, and it makes it harder for them to save the ball. So right here, when you're this guy that I'm spectating right now, you don't want to jump for this ball, because you need to think about what happens. Let's say, you know, you jump up, and let's say something bad happens. Maybe you hit it off the backboard or you just miss and it bounces back out. Now both you and your teammate are going to be in their half. And, and then the ball's going to bounce back out and they have a free net. So when you're playing second man like this and you have your teammate up and you know in their half like this. And he's not rotating out. You want to make sure you're very careful for what ball you go for. Because you don't want to overcommit yourself. Because it would be even better if this guy say right here gets the ball after it bounces on the backboard. Than if you jump and then something goes wrong and now your whole half is open for them to score on. And you'll see, see, and now they're already getting a counterattack. And let's say you had an even faster counterattack, which you'll see happen all the time. This is just an open net. And almost results in a goal. So right here, he already gets this hunter boost, and he still goes for this corner boost. I think a problem that a lot of people have down here is that they're like so focused on boost and they kind of forget that even if you have like 30, 40 plus boost, you know, you can still have good plays out of it. Also, another thing is you'll notice he's leaving his teammate by himself. So right after he flips like this and he's landing, the first thing that should be popped up in his head is my teammate is by himself. I need to get back to this as quick as possible. That should be the only thing that you're thinking right now. But instead, you'll see him just drive off to the boost and he doesn't have like a really good sense of danger. So right here, you'll see him throw the ball away. You'll see a lot of players down here, they don't know like where the other guy is, aka this guy on the wall. And so their first instinct is to just slam it this way. But even if this guy say right here, just quickly checks with his left stick, then he'll know how far away this guy is. And then he can dribble this and now he has control and this guy's on the wall, then the net's open. Whereas if you just slam it, then it goes right back to them and they can keep pressure. And that was one thing that I was talking about earlier is that when you keep pressure, it's hard for the other team to play defense. So you wanna make sure you're not allowing the other team to keep pressure on you the whole time. So here, but you know the ball is going to bounce off the backboard. So instead of continually just facing this way and then letting it bounce and then turning, just already pre-turn your car. Face this way, 
and then allow the ball to bounce and then you can instantly control it out rather than you know facing this way bouncing you go here and then now you're kind of awkward and trying to control it it just takes longer that way so also his teammate here as soon as he gets dunked his first thought should be rotating and instead you'll see him kind of just drive up this way i don't know if he's trying to go for the boost or what he's really trying to accomplish but you need to think about rotating as soon as you're done with your play unless they can get an instant pass to you where you can you know continue down to their side of the half so right here after he gets dunked bam you should turn this way turn in go back post get behind his teammate grab these pads and now he'll be here ready to you know go up for the ball or whatever rather than being you know with his teammate all the way in their half and now their net's completely open which i do believe results in a goal it does so yeah let's make sure you're rotating So one thing I want to see uh, more down here is cheating up. I feel like, especially in diamond and lower, I feel like most people never cheat up. And if you just cheat up here, you know, say even like every one in three kickoffs, you just cheat up. If you just cheat up here, grab these pads, bam, the ball goes out this way. And now say you're good at air dribbles or whatever, you can take this up to the wall or even if you want, you can control it down. But now you're on the ball and you can instantly start pressure rather than coming back all the way over here and then not being able to do anything on the ball. So a mechanic that you should definitely learn by now is speed aerials. He kind of just jumps up and then boosts up to this, which wastes way more boost and it's not as quick. You want to make sure you're learning to speed aerial. And basically you do that by jumping, leaning back and jumping all while boosting. It allows you to get quicker to the ball. So game sense here as well. When the ball's right above you like this and you have no momentum and you know that you're with your teammate pretty much in their half, you almost never want to jump for this. Or if you do, if you're tempted, just do a quick check, see where they're at, if they're jumping or not, and then go up. But you don't want to just jump without knowing because now, say you get dusted, your whole half is open and your net's not covered at all. So if you're this guy right now, check. Or even if you don't check, just kind of come out back this way, play safer. You don't want to jump for this. And in fact, he ends up giving them the ball, which might be a goal. So one thing I try to tell players is when your teammates in the corner, you don't want to just drive straight into the corner with them because what you do is, is you place yourself all over here, two guys, and now your net's completely open. And say this guy, just this one guy gets it around both of you, now your net's open for the second guy to just come in and shoot it. So whenever you see your teammate in the corner with the ball, you kind of just want to stay in the net and see what happens. So just kind of sit here, stay here, see what he does. If you can play him, it's cool. If he passes it over to you, then you can take it, you know, or you just wait for his play. Um, and then maybe if he gets into the half, then you drive up. But you don't want to just drive into the corner with them. So you see a double commit here. So in your head, you should just be thinking, this guy's closer. It's already facing this way. Just let him jump. Stay on the ground a little bit longer. And if you see he's not jumping, then jump. But you kind of take off right here when the ball is still kind of, you know, high up. Just wait. If you see this guy doesn't jump at about maybe right here, then you can go up. But he's already up. So you don't want to double commit. So if you're Glum Horse here, you do not want to jump for this because you already see a teammate, you know, has the play on the ball. Your only goal here should be to rotate onto the back post and get behind your teammate. You guys are already facing the play and you can go up. You don't want to jump up here because now you make this guy commit and then you're jumping with low boost. And now this guy can come hit the ball even if you wanted to. And then you just make it easier for them to pressure you. So it's a little bit harder of a mechanic to get used to. But as soon as you see the ball going up here, you can know whether you have time to go up and then clear it or just turn and stay on the ground. But here you have enough time. If you just boost here to this boost, and then you come here, bounce, clear it off, kind of like if you're taking a normal shot on the ground and you're just clearing it, you clear it off the wall, then you can start counter attack. Should have got scored on for that. So this guy's jumping way early again. So if you look at the other team, nobody's going for this. This guy's driving up to you, this guy's going out. You can just wait for the ball to come down a little bit more. If maybe then they turn instantly and try to challenge, then you can jump. But you want to control this if you can, and you're jumping way too early. See, look, they're not even going. Then you can control it. Kind of like what your teammate does a little bit, except he gets a bad hit at the, at the end. So like right here, he's waiting, he's waiting. Obviously he sees you jumping, so he doesn't want to jump. But even if you say we're not jumping here and you wanted to go for this, he should be doing the same thing, just waiting for the ball to come down. I think that's a common theme in Diamond, is people not being able to control the ball. Once again, you see him throw the ball away here. So bam, he just bangs it straight to the guy. This guy turns up the wall and hits it. It's going to be a counterattack for them every time. Instead, you want to try to control this. Again, he throws the ball away. So, looking at the other team real quickly, if you're this guy right here, as soon as your teammate going for this ball in the corner, you should be instantly rotating back post, like I said earlier. You don't want to turn into this corner with the teammate because now you're both in the corner and then it's easy for the other team to start a counterattack and you might possibly get in the way of your teammate. Just pick up the pads, grab more boost, go back post. So you come to the net, see what your teammate with the ball, does with the ball, 
kind of wait, see what happens. And then you see this touch and then you can go. So this was actually kind of like what I was talking about earlier, this is good. So you see the teammates on their half. Now, if he had 30 boosts here, he probably would have gone, you know, and grabbed a big boost or something all the way back. But because he has 70, he stays. But even if you had like 20 here, you want to do exactly what he does here. He just stays on the boost pads, stays in the play. And now look, you just keep pressure. Look, now he's here for this and he's keeping pressure. Now, he shouldn't have flipped into this because he just gives him the ball. But like right here, you just double jump into this and not flip, just kind of hit it, let it roll into the corner or whatever, keep pressure, it's better. Make sure you give yourself a better angle on this corner. So instead of going in and attacking the ball this way, like he does, make sure when this is rolling like this, you're coming in this way and staying behind the ball because you don't want to go up this way. You stay this way, you can maybe pass it in mid if you can, if you can get around it. Or if he just jumps, you can 50. If it comes down, you can kind of like, maybe try to fake him out and then play it around him or something or like fake like you're going to hit it around him and then just take it into the net. But you don't want to just hit it up this way because it gives you no, you know, options. So Glum does something pretty good here that I want, um, if you're watching this, you know, your diamond, I want you to keep in mind of this because a lot of diamonds don't do this. But he sees that his teammate doesn't have pressure on the ball. And so he instantly wants to become the guy to pressure it because he doesn't want to give this guy too much space. It's actually good. Comes in, now he's pressuring it. So you see this happen too. He's wasting too much boost. Once you grab this, you don't need to just go, you know, boost, 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 boost. Just don't need to do that. Stop fluttering your boost because you end up just wasting it. Like you grab the, you have a hundred or you had a hundred and then you're just fluttering it. And now you, you get all the way over here and now you're 73 and you end up having 27 less boost than you had when you picked up the boost pad. Okay. So if you're glum here, you don't want to hit this ball. If you want to know if you can hit this quickly, check where your teammates at. He's there and just drive around, rotate behind them. Let him go for the ball. Let it come down to him. But here, your teammate's waiting for it, and then you just hit it around them, and now it's awkward. And if this guy's ready to counter, he comes here. Look how open the net is. It's good pressure. It should be a goal. Once again, you'll see a lot of open net misses in Diamond, because you're not going to get to champ if you're just going to keep missing these open nets and all these scoring opportunities. Good, good to keep pressure. So you see he's keeping pressure here. This is good. You watch, because now, you know, he's forcing them to play defense. He still turns, which is still fine. He gets the boost. And then he kind of messes the play up. So he's doing really well until this touch right here. If you're going to hit this anywhere near the backboard, you want to hit it higher up off the backboard so it comes back out to your teammate. So you're wasting way too much boost. So one thing also to keep in mind, especially if you're diamond or even a lot of champs, but whenever there's not an immediate play on your net, you don't need to waste all your boost. Even if this guy just dro drove slowly right here, just drive slowly. Look at what, look what happens. Look, he's still on the play. Whereas this guy goes from having a hundred and he abuses all of his boost for nothing. And now he's at 24. Another thing, if you're last man and you see them on the ball, you don't want to just dive in because all you need to do is get it around you and it's an open net. So if you want to fake challenge here, it's fine, but don't just throw yourself into this. All right, so that's the end of the replay. They end up forfeiting. If this one helped you out, make sure to let me know down below. And uh, if you liked the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let me know what rank you want me to do next. But uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.